Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Tech with Sachin. My name is Sachin, a Google Developer Expert, and in today's video, we'll learn how to extend your existing Android applications to Google Assistant using App Actions. If you're new to the channel, make sure to hit the subscribe button as well as the bell icon so that you can be notified for future videos. So without further ado, let's get started. The purpose of this video is to show step-by-step -step instructions on how to build and extend your Android applications to Google Assistant using App Actions. In this tutorial and code lab, you'll learn how to know if App Actions are right for your Android app, how to connect a built-in intent with an Android activity, how to get deep link URL parameters for an Android app from the Assistant, how to use inline inventories to map identifiers to app functionality, and finally, also learn how to test app actions in Android Studio. To begin, we will start with a sample fitness Android app and add app actions to it so that you can use the power of Google Assistant to extend some of the functionalities of the sample fitness Android app. So the first step would be to open up your terminal and clone the GitHub repository for the sample project. Once the project is downloaded, open it in Android Studio. In the Welcome to Android Studio dialog, click Open an existing Android Studio project and then choose the sample project that we have just downloaded. As you implement app actions for this fitness app, you'll be tasked with testing inputs using Android Studio plugin. You'll install this plugin later in this code lab but you won't be able to use the test tool until your app is uploaded to a project in the Google Play console. To make your version of the sample fitness app unique in the console, change the application ID listed in the default Android configs app build.gradle file. Replace my unique name and the application ID with something unique to you. Before we run the app, make sure to update the Android Gradle plugin. If you plan on testing this on an Android emulator, make sure to create an Android virtual device. Pick a version of your choice so that we can test our application directly on the virtual device. The recommended OS version is Android 8 or API level 26 or higher. Although actions run on devices back to Android 5, which is API level 21. Before making any other changes to the Android app, it may be helpful to get an idea of what the sample app can do. Try running the app on the emulator. The emulator starts and boots just like a physical device. So it may take a while depending on the speed of your computer. Once your app builds and the emulator is ready, Android Studio uploads the app to the emulator and runs it. So let us quickly explore the app to see what it can do. Tapping the run icon starts an exercise timer and tapping the X icon then stops the timer. These are the two tasks you'll enable with app actions in this code lab. You can also directly run this application in the physical device. Make sure to enable developer options and then turn on USB debugging. Once USB debugging is enabled, connect your Android phone to your computer or laptop or Mac and then run the application in Android Studio. The app will now run directly on your physical device and you should have the same experience as we had in the emulator. So the next step is to upload your app to the Google Play Console. Build your app in Android Studio and upload it to the Play Console as an internal release. Uploading the app is a prerequisite for using the App Actions test tool in Android Studio. So in Android Studio, go to Build, Generate Signed APK, and select the Android app bundle and click Next. Enter details to digitally sign your app and click Next. Thank you. 
and finally select the release build variant and click finish. And in the Google Play console, upload the app bundle you just created as a new app. On the All Apps page, click Create App. Give the app any name you want and click Create App. For this code lab, you won't need to fill out any of the app information once the app is created. From the sidebar menu, go to release and find the internal testing page. Click create new release on the internal testing page. And finally, in the app bundles and APKs panel, upload the AAB file you generated earlier. It's likely in the app release directory. Now that you have successfully uploaded your app to the Play Console, it's time to go back to Android Studio. So the next step is to install the test plugin. Google Assistant needs to be aware of app actions registered to your app. So you need to communicate that information somehow. So during development, you do that using the app actions test tool Android Studio plugin. If you don't already have the plugin, install it. You can go to File, Settings, in Mac, you can choose Android Studio Preferences. In the Plugin section, go to the Marketplace and search for App Action Test Tool. Install the tool and restart Android Studio. The next part is to identify App Actions and prepare deep links. To set up an App Action, you need to find a built-in intent that maps to a function performed by your Android app. The built-in intents reference page lists the built-in intents available for Google Assistant each of which models a common way users express tasks they're trying to do. In the reference, built-in intents that can be fulfilled by app actions are grouped by category and functionality. The key point to note is choosing the built-in intents appropriate for what your user wants to do is an essential part of implementing app actions. So for this code lab, you are implementing two built-in intents to help out your user. The first one is start exercise tracking, which is represented by actions.intent.start exercise and stop exercise tracking, which is represented by actions.intent.stop exercise. This process involves setting up a deep link, defining the app action in the app's XML resources, and then connecting the two. Now that we have a high level understanding, let's implement deep links first. Deep links take users directly to content passing information from the intent to the app in the process. By default, the assistant uses deep links to fulfill the intent and pass parameters to the app. For this code lab, incoming deep links use the fitactions.firebase.com host and HTTPS scheme. So in the Android manifest file, add an intent filter for the main activity to define the supported deep links. Now in the main activity, add the following functions to define the behavior for an incoming deep link. Deeplink.start and deeplink.stop 
are defined as constants in the sample app and they map to a corresponding path of an incoming deep link. In the deep link dot start case, the handler also gets argument that comes in via deep link URL parameters. Now update the handle intent function of the same file to use the deep link handler. Now when the app filters an intent of that format, which is HTTPS fitactions.firebase.com slash start, it starts an exercise timer. Now that we have handled deep links, let's define our app actions. For app actions to work, Google Assistant needs to know which app actions are registered to your app. You communicate this information by uploading an actions.xml file to the Play Console as part of your Android package. It only takes a few steps to create the new resource and reference it. Create an actions.xml file to establish which built-in intents to connect and what parameters are needed. Map the built-in intent parameters to deep link parameters in your activities. And finally, add a reference to your actions.xml file in the Android manifest. So the next step is to create the actions.xml file. To describe the app actions supported by the app, you create a new XML file named actions.xml. In Android Studio, go to File, New, XML, and then choose App Actions XML file. Enter actions as the action file name. Click finish to both create the new actions.xml file and add a reference to it in your Android manifest file. Once the new file is created, replace the contents of actions.xml file with the following code. In the code, you use elements to define app actions for starting and stopping an exercise timer in the app. The intent name attributes correspond to two built-in intents you're fulfilling using app actions and the elements tell Assistant how to use your app to achieve the action. Here, both actions are fulfilled by constructing deep links using the URL template attribute. The URL templates use the host and scheme you define for deep links in your Android manifest file. The paths in each URL template corresponds to what the handle deep link function expects. Note that for starting the timer, you also map the exercise.name parameter from the built-in intent to the exercise type URL parameter. This allows your deep link handler to get arguments for its business logic from Assistant. Before proceeding, we also need to confirm that our Android manifest file references the actions.xml file that we created. It's finally time to try out your app actions on your test device. Connect your test device and use the test tool to test the app action. Go to Tools, App Actions, App Actions Test Tool. You may be asked to sign in to Android Studio. Make sure to use the same account used earlier with the Google Play Console. In the invocation field, enter fit actions. If the language for your assistant is not English, US, enter the locale that matches the language of your assistant in the locale field. Click create preview. Using the configured dropdown list, select the built-in intent you want to test and click run. If given the option to open with Google, select always to allow assistant to open supported links. You can always make sure that you can change this later in your app settings. When the app action test tool creates or updates a preview of your app actions, it does so for a single Google account, temporarily registering your defined app actions. That preview enables Assistant to recognize your app actions before deploying the production version of your app to the Google Play Console. 
Once the test tool fetches the built-in intents for your app, you can directly provide the intents with parameter values and trigger the app action from Android Studio. As an alternative, you can use the invocation name directly in the Assistant app on your device to try out your app action. For example, you could say, Hey Google, start running in Fit Actions to launch the app action that starts an exercise timer. Stop exercise. Start running. Stop running. Start hiking in fit actions. Stop hiking in fit actions. As you can see, you can now start and stop exercise timers in your fitness app via Google Assistant. But you may have also noticed that only certain exercises are recognized. Requests like start hiking in fit actions lead to a timer that starts with the text start unknown in. That's because the only exercise types currently supported by the sample app are running, cycling and walking. But how can you better accommodate users who want to use the app to track other exercises? So for this, you can increase the number of available exercises in a couple of ways. First is to add app support for more exercise types like swimming and climbing, limited by the supported text field values for the actions.intent.start exercise built-in intent. The other way is to also map another supported exercise type like hiking to one that's already supported in the app like walking. If you add support for more exercise types, then you can connect to more pathways in your app based on the exercise the user wants to do. That's one way to help users and it's the correct choice if your app can perform different tasks for different exercises. In this code lab, you'll use inline inventory to map start hiking to the app functionality for start walking. Inline inventory defines specific entities your app expects users to include when triggering app actions with Assistant. You can add the inline inventory in your actions.xml file to directly create a listing of supported options for users. Each element in the inline inventory represents a unique match for the user's query. Entities allow Assistant to distinguish between supported inputs like running, walking, and cycling. They are especially useful when you want Assistant to recognize certain information that's specific to your app, like menu items or services. By adding an entity for the hiking string, you allow hikers to take advantage of the functionality you already built for walking. It's finally time to test out your inventory. In the test tool, creating or updating your preview fetches the registered built-in intents for your app. You can directly provide the intents with parameter values and trigger the app actions from Android Studio. So click on Update Preview. From the Configure drop-down list, select Actions.intent.startExercise. Type Hiking into the Exercise.name field. Select your device from the Select Target Device drop-down list and click on Run. We have now successfully covered all the skills that's necessary to add app actions to an Android app. Start hiking in fit actions. Just to summarize, we have learned how to identify Android activities that have a corresponding built-in intent users can trigger via app actions. We also learned how to pass parameters from a built-in intent to an Android app. We also learned how to use inline inventory to map supported values to app functionality identifiers. And finally, also learn how to test app actions in Android Studio. Let me know in the comment section below on what built-in intents you would use in your Android app to extend the functionalities of the Google Assistant. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you're new to the channel, make sure to hit the subscribe button as well as the bell icon so that you can be notified for future videos. Once again, my name is Sachin and see you all in the next one.